with another story time because you guys liked last week's story so much I thought let me tell you this story so this story is about drug smuggling and how you get dragged into it because I don't know about you guys but every time I watch Locked Up Abroad I'm like baffled how people get you know dragged into these situations while they know you know the risks and what it could cost them but this guy taught me how these kind of situations happen so my idea was because I have dozens of these kind of stories and I wanted to let you choose if you're okay with that so when you're done with this video hop on over to my Facebook the link is down in this description below and there will be two new stories for you to choose from and the most popular story I will make a video about it I was in China sitting in the common room of a hostel and this guy we got to talking he was from the US he was super smart we were talking about all kinds of topics he was a really nice guy at one point we started talking about chemistry because I was wondering like if you wash your hands for less than 30 seconds will they be bacteria free I can't remember his answer but it was quite good and it was really smart so I was impressed I was like what okay you know your stuff so that's how we got, you know, into this chemistry subject. And at one point, I don't know why, we started talking about drugs. And I am a girl with a hardcore Eastern European upbringing, which means that ever since I was a little girl, my parents always taught me, like, if you only smoke one joint, you'll end up as the biggest crack whore in the gutter and nobody will ever want you or want to be friends with you and you will just, you know, waste your life. So ever since I was a little girl, I was always very scared of drugs. I smoked maybe three joints in my life because, you know, you live in the Netherlands, it's legal, but I fell asleep and I just decided drugs is, meh. it's not my thing. I don't have any friends that use drugs and so he made this remark about drugs and my common response to that is that I don't know that that's not my common response like we got to talking about drugs and at one point I told him like my thoughts about it and I was like I think it's an escape for people from their emotions just like alcohol is and just like you know cigarettes are a distraction for, from the stress that you're feeling right now blah 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 and that's why I think like it's an escape from dealing with what you feeling inside and I think it's like not the best solution for your problems and he looks at me like this and he's like but you can have a lot of fun with drugs <laughs> please remind that Eastern European upbringing because I was like no bro that's strike one <laughs> like in my book saying those kind of things is like a minus 10 on the on my I like you scale so I was already like Nah, nah, not even getting into that conversation, not even getting into that discussion, so I just talked over it, but it, he already had like minus 10 points. So we continued the conversation, but all kinds of different topics, yada yada yada. At one point, hours have passed and we go to dinner because it was already quite late and I asked him, do you want to join me for dinner, which was cool. So we're sitting at dinner and we're still like talking about all kinds of things and he tells me that he used to be a drug dealer and he's from the US mind you so you know being a drug dealer in the US it's quite risky but he told me like he had a big fight with his parents and it was the only way to pay for college and I do know that college in the US is it's very expensive so who am I to judge you because I haven't been in that situation but still I register it as strike two but there are other things that he is doing which are giving me like this uncomfortable feeling in this conversation like he is making these small degrading remarks on various occasions like trying to make me insecure stuff like that and also there's this one thing that he's doing which is annoying the ish out of me because he at least three times in that dinner conversation mentions that you know, I'm able to afford something. So for instance, I take the restaurant menu and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, this is a little bit more expensive restaurant than I usually go to, but it's fine. You know, just, it's just a remark. I was just looking at the menu, nothing special. And he's, he looks at me like, like, 
but you're from the Netherlands, you can afford it. And why is someone ringing the doorbell? I'm filming a video, I'm telling you a story, damn. This is ruining our chemistry. Okay, anyways, I will continue. So it's not that he made this remark one time, he makes it multiple times. And at one point, like, he, it's really starting to annoy me because you have no idea how much money I have in my bank account. Also, too, who are you to decide for me what I want to spend my money on? Because to be very honest, I can afford a designer bag for the money that I use to travel for one month, but I prefer to travel for one month instead of being able to afford that designer bag, you know? It, it's, for me, it's just very rude for someone to decide for you what you can and can't afford. So he's already starting to bug me, and also with all those druggy things, I'm like, this dude is just giving me this eerie feeling, no matter that, you know, he's very smart and we can have good conversations. I'm just getting this, this bad vibe. So we return to the hostel the rest of the evening. We spend with a lot of other people and just not in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I'm like, whatever. Uh, he did tell me that he wanted to visit a temple the next day, early in the morning. And I, because it sounded like an interesting temple, I was like, yeah, I want to join you, but I don't know if I will be able to make it in the morning because I still have a lot of editing to do for my videos, of course. So he's like, yeah, sure, if you make it, then, then join me. If you can't make it, then that's fine too. Okay, so that night I just go to bed. Next morning I wake up and I go back into the common room ready to have my breakfast and he's still sitting there. It's 11 a.m. and I knew that he wanted to go early. So I'm like, hmm? weren't you supposed to go to the temple? And I'm like, mm, okay, whatever. I just join him at the table. There's this other guy joining us as well. I'm eating my breakfast, la 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 la. We're having a conversation. At one point it's about high school stories and all the crazy things that you used to do, you know? And then he drops the bomb that really like sets me off like, what? So he tells us, like me and the other guy, that while he was in high school, they had like the wildest, craziest time in this cabin in the woods where they used to go every weekend with the whole school. And there were a lot of drugs and we used to use like all different kinds mixing them and oh, this, those were the wildest times, la 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 The thing is, like, for one, I don't think that's very healthy, but two, he's gloating about it. He's showing off. And on top of it, he's still like making those little bit degrading remarks towards me, like making me feel like I'm boring or I'm not adventurous or stuff like that. And I'm like, nah, bruh, nah, honestly, you're really talking to the wrong girl if you think that this will impress me in any kind of way. If anything, that's strike three. So at this point, I'm, I know for sure that we will never be friends. Like, I can know you, I can have you on Facebook, but friends, mm -mm. nah, that's not gonna happen. Like, he's, he's way too much into drugs for my taste but um i'm still like i'm still cool and i'm still like hang out at the table and at the end of my breakfast like i finish my breakfast and he's like are you ready to go to the temple i'm like what you were waiting for me you were supposed to go early this morning but you were waiting for me and you want me to go with you to the temple and seriously, there was no vibe between us at all. Like he was, I can, I can sense if a guy is attracted to me or if he's like trying to hit on me or anything. That was not it. He was just waiting for me. Like, you know, you get this eerie feeling that somebody is luring you into a trap or something. So I'm, but it's still like very unconscious for me. It's just this eerie, annoying feeling that this guy is not, not okay. So I tell him, I'm sorry, but I still have a lot of editing to do. Just give me your email address. And if I finish on time, I will send you an email and I will join you. Unfortunately, fortunately, actually, uh, the editing takes up way more time than I thought it would beforehand. And 
I have to pack because that night I'm going to the airport. Now, if it wasn't for that, you know, that momentum that I was going to the airport, I might have not made this connection because this was still like just an eerie feeling and I did notice all these things, but I didn't, you know, I didn't put one on one and one together. So I grab my stuff, la la la, and I'm in the metro on my way to the airport. Well, it suddenly dawns on me that this is the type of person that would put drugs in your suitcase. Or if you are into drugs and they convince you to, you know, smoke a joint with them or do whatever, would make you feel like it's okay and not dangerous to smuggle drugs. Because what he was doing, he was trying to figure out if he could do drugs with me, how my attitude was towards drugs, and remember that annoying remark he kept making about, oh, but you're able to afford it? He was checking my financial situation, if I needed money, if I was desperate enough to smuggle drugs for money. So I'm in this metro and I'm like, <laughs> like everything is coming together and I'm like, <gasps> Like, this is the guy who would, you know, get me locked abroad. And I, I'm just lucky to have this, like, super Eastern European upbringing, upbringing that, you know, lets me stay far away from drugs in general. But I thought it would be, like, a super good story to tell you because I, I, I just realized at that moment that this is how you get lured into drug smuggling. So this is why I wanted to tell you the story because I've met a lot of travelers during my travels who are okay with, you know, smoking weed or doing other things, other drugs. And I just wanted to warn you, like, this is the type of person who will get you into trouble I and, mean, like, convince you that it's okay to smuggle drugs or even just plant drugs in your suitcase if, it, if they get the chance. So I think like for me it was such an eye-opener uh, to even stay further away from people who are... You know, it's one thing when people, you know, use drugs for recreational purposes, isn't it always? No, it isn't. Actually, you also have medicinal marijuana, but it's one thing to do that for yourself, but it's another thing to, you know, show off about it and make someone else feel that they're boring if they are not doing it. And especially when you're traveling, I think this is a super big red flag of someone who is trying to lure you into, you know, maybe a drug operation or drug smuggling. And especially, like I told you, if they're checking up on your financial situation, if they, they're like, you know, poking around to see if you need the money, um, yeah, I think those are like two ginormous red flags to just stay away from that person if you, you know, don't want to be locked up abroad. And I was like, nah, bruh, nah. So I really hope this story was educational as well as entertaining. If it was, please put a thumbs up. And also, if you want to see more story time videos, please put a thumbs up as well. Hop on over to Facebook to check out the two other story time options if you are interested and if they're popular, of course, I will make more videos about it. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, wait, if you're not subscribed and you're interested in more of my stories or more of my travel videos, yada, 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 press subscribe and then I'll see you another time. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.